This is Retrohammer, Adeptus Mechanicus Tet Priests, Pontifex Maximus. The universe of Warhammer 40,000 is home to many bizarre and unusual alien races, all of whom contribute to the rich tapestry of one of the deepest science fiction settings ever created. It would, however, be a mistake to assume that the unfamiliar is restricted to other species and not all humans are remotely recognisable as such in this dissonant future. None embody this notion more fully than the Magos, Adepts and other followers of the Machine God, widely known as the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Mechanicus is an ancient human civilization who revere technology above all else and strive to become as one with the machine and shed the weak trappings of mortal humanity, such as emotion and the flesh, becoming transcendent beings of pure human logic served by their vastly augmented and awfully completely mechanically replaced bodies. The Adeptus Mechanicus served as a pivotal element in the plot structure of Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader lore by creating a narrative mystery around the far future technology of the Imperium of Man. They are the guardians of the incredible hardware and systems that allow interstellar human civilization to survive, maintaining and replicating these precious technologies and yet never innovating anything new. This staid dogma is at the heart of the Mechanicus, and they are often referred to as tech priests, magi, or engine seers, for they treat technology with mystical reverence that makes them appear as an ordained practitioner of religion would to you or I today. Needless to say, the members of the Adeptus Mechanicus are core elements to the lore of the Empire, and were depicted in the early art of the Rogue Trader rulebook in considerable detail. Illustration by Will Rees depicted post-human machine things of the Mechanicus, but it was a somewhat less noir painting, Pontifex Maximus, by John Blanche, that served as a real genesis for subsequent representations of the Omnisire's servants. Aside from an early and somewhat generic miniature, the definitive figures were released at the same time as the Imperial Guard Army List, in name as Adeptus Mechanicus. These three miniatures, sculpted by Bob Ollie, were highly individual and eclectic designs and portrayed very different ideas of what a tech priest was and one of them was a direct realisation of the mysterious red-robed figure of Pontifex Maximus. Despite the persistent prominence of the Adeptus Mechanicus in the lore, their tabletop depictions have been somewhat scarce and were mainly limited to supporting characters in other Imperial formations, barely a handful of miniatures. Occasional releases from Games Workshop and even more rarely, Forge World, were all that were to sustain the adherence of the Machine God. The most comprehensive release until the last five years was a set of tech priests and servitors that required the eye-watering collection of 100 skulls. The most comprehensive release until the last five years was a set of tech priests and servitors that required the eye-watering collection of 100 skulls to obtain under the reward scheme that was operated by Games Workshop at the time. The modern renaissance of the Adeptus Mechanicus was not as a result of a direct Games Workshop initiative, but the development of the Horus Heresy era by Forgeworld. Under the title of the Mechanicum, the tech priests of Mars and the Forgeworlds were realised as never before in a large and bold range of miniatures depicting the servants of the Omnissiah in the age of the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy. These designs paid homage to elements of previous art and figures of the preceding years, while creating something of a unique style that has set the tone for subsequent 30k miniatures. Once merely supporting actors in the battles of the grim dark future, the Adeptus Mechanicus finally burst forth into the battlefields of the 41st millennium, with the release of a Skitari army by Games Workshop in 2015, rapidly followed by the Cult Mechanicus, after many years of waiting, a player's Pontifex Maximus finally had a diaspora of followers through which tabletop dominance could be achieved. And thank you very much for joining me for this latest episode of Retro Hammer, where we are going to be taking a look at the early Adeptus Mechanicus miniatures by Games Workshop, and then taking a bit of a journey through time to look at some of the miniatures that came in the intervening years, right up to the modern day, and some of the most recent servants of the Omnissiah. As well as looking at the miniatures, we're going to also be looking at some of the early artistic depictions, both in Rogue Trader and White Dwarf magazines. 
What we have before us are the three original Adeptus Mechanicus miniatures released by Games Workshop. And the release of these three miniatures coincided to the publication of the original Imperial Guard Armour List, which was back in White Dwarf 109. So this was early 1989, January 1989. And originally we first had this miniature here. The Adeptus Mechanicus Tech Priest. And as we can see, this is a fascinating model. And this was sculpted by Bob Ollie, as all three of these miniatures were. A sculptor who did quite a lot of work in the early Games Workshop days on 40K. Now, this model is old, but it is still fantastically well detailed even today. This draws a lot from the art of Rogue Trader, which we're going to take a look at in the moment. And the Tech Priest is wearing powered armour. And you can very much see this has a style similar to Space Marine armour of the time. And those people who know the LE2 Imperial Space Marine will recognise some design cues. Although it has a more RTB01 style leg armour. And this guy was armed with the Power Axe, which was to become a signature Mechanicus weapon. On the shoulder pad, he's got this rictus face with an eagle wing perhaps attached, and that's mirrored on both sides. You might say that this um, looks a little bit like, well, I don't know quite what it's supposed to be. It does look a little bit like the Empress Children badge. It's quite intriguing. When Bob Ollie sculpted these as tech priests, I think he was imagining them as being a fearful, terrifying priest. That's, I guess, what they are within the universe of 40k. Although later styling was to go in a somewhat different direction. The second of the three, which was actually released at a later date, at White Dwarf 109, it was just this figure that became available. This guy and this guy came along later. This is a fascinating model and one that I hadn't really appreciated back in the day. And this really takes the concept of a priest and mashes it together with perhaps a historical representation of a priest. And there's a lot of, shall we say, South American influence in this Aztec Mayan style iconography, as we can see from the double-headed power axe. The helmet is clearly a powered armour helmet again, but this time it's been fashioned in the style of a mandrel, or a male mandrel, which is a intriguing depiction to say the least. And he's got this short robe around his waist, he's clearly wearing powered armour like the other guy. And he's got a very ornate power pack on his back. As you can see, as I was saying, the detailing on these was truly impressive. They were very finely detailed. So this is certainly taking the idea of a present day concept of a priest and laying it onto the Mechanicus. Perhaps a, a design that hasn't carried forward so much, but a fascinating piece of the gaming history nonetheless. The final of the three Mechanicus is perhaps the most interesting from a point of view of the artistic inspiration and progression of the Adeptus Mechanicus. And the reason for that is this is a clear imagining of a tech priest based on the artwork of a John Blanche artwork, Pontifex Maximus, in the original Warhammer 40,000 Road Trader rulebook. And this is a much more macabre and disturbing image of the tech priest. We can't see the tech priest's face. It's shrouded in this tattered robe and they have one eye or one vision port perhaps. Certainly not in the position of a normal set of human eyes and there's a swarm of tubes that are attaching into the hooded cowl. This is clearly a very odd 
distorted, unusual figure. And this one of the three alludes most to the idea that the Adeptus Mechanicus are replacing their biological form with machine parts. This guy is armed with an Aurax, the signature weapon of the Mechanicus, and a more heraldic style eagle head at the top of the axe. Very different style power pack on the back. At this stage, there was no such thing as a servo arm or a machinator array. That was to come later. Now, this is an absolutely fascinating model. And ironically, as huh, you'll often hear me say, looking back at these figures, at the time, this was my favorite figure and the one that I wanted and bought. However, now this is one I appreciate the most because of the more deeper artistic references it makes. So those are the three original Adeptus Mechanicus miniatures that were released. There was an earlier fairly nondescript scientist miniature that was released, which I think was actually called a Tech Priest, which came along much earlier. As we'll see, that was basically kind of like a scientist in a lab coat. Nothing like the fantastical, mysterious nature of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Now what we'll do is we'll go to the Rogue Trader Warhammer 40,000 rulebook to look at some of the early art which went behind the Adeptus Mechanicus. And then we'll follow and we'll look at White Dwarf 109 to see the original depictions of this guy and even this guy in an army list. Here we have the Warhammer 40,000 first edition Rogue Trader rulebook. Anyone who's owned this book knows that it's full of fascinating illustrations and there's a few in particular that we're going to look at here to understand about the early artistic depictions of the Adeptus Mechanicus. These actually go quite neatly in order, I think, in terms of how it actually relates to the evolution of the miniatures. So the first thing is actually a very minor little point to look at. On this page here, this was at the start of the section called the Age of the Imperium and the background to the Imperium of Man. And there's this lovely illustration here, which in a page and a half charts, maybe 15 to 20,000 years of human history, moving from the golden age of technology all the way through to the Imperium. But just here, we see this scientist in a lab coat. This is actually a drawing of a miniature, I believe, or a miniature was made based on that drawing. And this was what was actually released as the first ever Tech Priest model as part of, um, I think it was Pirates and Adventurers, I believe the miniatures were called. Perhaps uh, one of you guys or girls remember those models and can give a bit more detail there. It's interesting just that little thing there to see that, but as you can see, it's a very conventional looking person and the Adeptus Mechanicus was to take on a very, very different form in the long run. And that brings us to this picture here, which is perhaps one of the most terrifying and gothic depictions of anything in the Rogue Trader rulebook. This drawing is by Will Rees and it depicts a set of barely human looking Adeptus Mechanicus and it has a little bit of a lore to go with it at the bottom. The Chime of the Eons. This kind of like represents the Adeptus Mechanicus taken to the extreme. There are some slight vestiges of humans to them but in general, they are grotesque and replaced completely by machine parts and fearsome and even somewhat demonic looking. Definitely the stuff of nightmares those were. That certainly was a powerful image in the evolution of the Adeptus Mechanicus in terms of kind of like thinking how extreme they might appear. But the picture that really, I think, led to a lot of the inspiration for the later miniatures was actually painted by John Blanche. And that's this picture here which is titled, quite amusingly here, Pontifex Maximus. That has a lot of meaning, and here we have something that looks very much like all tech priests that were to come later. And we've got this somewhat uh, besheveled guy here. Behind him we have this mysterious red-robed being with various arms and apparatus attached to his back. He's wearing a red cloak, which was a, a signature part of any Mechanicum wear to come later and we can't quite tell what's poking through the cowl there. Is this a mouth? Is this his eye? Is this a remain of his skin here? Probably. And as I say, this was the picture that, for me, very much directly inspired Bob Ollie when he crafted this miniature, and the similarities are plain and apparent to see. I think John Blanche, with this picture, really defined the Mechanicum 
in a very profound way. It does make me wonder because of course it says here Pontifex Maximus and the Pontifex Maximus of course is a Roman and in effect the head or the chief priest of the Roman state religion. Is this sort of in modern terms this is alluding to perhaps this being the fabricator general of Mars, the head of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Very seminal and influential piece of artwork here that was to shape everything that was to come. Those are the three images from Rogue Trader that are really fascinating to look at here. Now what we're going to do is going to go forward just over a year in time to White Dwarf 109 and take a look at the original appearance of the Adeptus Mechanicus miniature in the Imperial Guard Army list. And here we are now at White Dwarf 109 that was released in January 1989. This is a great White Dwarf. There's so much stuff in it, ranging from the first article ever about the Warhound Titan all the way through to the Imperial Guard Army List. And it also had the first ever Terminator Marines. What a magazine. So many ideas depicted for the first time that were going to have an influence later on. So here we have the Imperial Guard Army List. This was kind of in the style of the chapter approved articles. This was back in the day when Imperial Guard had rhinos and land raiders. Great box set of miniatures there, if anyone remembers having that. And here we have one of our Bob Ollie Adeptus Mechanicus, pictured in art. And this is one of my all-time favourite artists who did this. This is a sketch done by Paul Bonner. Now, at this point, things have changed. So instead of having the art creating the miniatures, here, the miniature which was this guy, was depicted in the art as this fella here. And this guy compared to what we saw in the Rogue Trader rulebook is a very, very different realization of the Adeptus Mechanicus. It looks pretty normal. He's clearly quite practical. He's a battlefield warrior. He's armored, he's carrying weapons. Yeah, complete change in style to the priestly depictions that we'd seen before. And in some ways, this isn't a style that's carried through to the modern day, much more of a priestly, Magi style is what we see in everything that came since. Another fascinating piece of John Blanche artwork there. If you ever wondered what a plasma annihilator is going to do in a, a battle, I think that's uh, one of the best depictions I've ever seen. And the Imperial Guard Armour List, the reason why the Adeptus Mechanicus came out at the same time, is they fulfilled the same role as the Tech Marines did in the Astartes forces. and. You know, it even had a whole section talking about their background, their use, how to repair equipment. The Adeptus Mechanicus were also accompanied by servitors. And there's another cool Paul Bonner picture there showing some unfortunate servitors working on a thud gun. And the servitors were the vassal slaves in effect of the Adeptus Mechanicus and they had to do all the hard, dirty work where the Adeptus Mechanicus were those with all the knowledge. And there's just one other little sketch here in the armless section. Not to D6 Adeptus Mechanicus of 15 points each. And we got the guy in the power armor who we saw in the Paul Bonner sketch reimagined here. But then we've also got this guy here in the cloak with the obscured face and the tubes. And again, that's this fella being imagined. And then in the miniature release of the new miniature release page that uh, episode, here we have that first Adeptus Mechanicus figure, as it says, designed by Bob Ollie. And this is back in the day where you could choose a base it would come with. <laughs> and you could even get them with metal bases if you wanted. That's a, a bit of a sign of the times, the illuminations. Interestingly, there's another sketch by Will Rees, and this is actually of a Titan pilot, or probably a Titan princeps, and he's brought his gritty biological, technological meshing together there very well. I think that's great. So that's some artwork that went around the Adeptus Mechanicus in the early, early days. And this represented something of a bit of an evolutionary stop for the Mechanicus in 40K. After the release of these three miniatures, not much else happened and we enter a bit of what you might call a miniature wilderness. But there were a few oases on the way and we're going to now take a look at those.
1989 then, we got these three Adeptus Mechanicus miniatures, Tech Priest miniatures, and they were also released with some Servitor models as well. They're machine slaves. But at this point, there was no real further development of the Adeptus Mechanicus as a distinct faction, or even really much in the way of a supporting group to the other factions of the Imperium. And indeed, we went on to get many other diverse factions representing different parts of the Imperium, although the Imperial Guard and Space Marines were the mainstays that kept going. We did get the Adeptus Serratus as well, and then later the Grey Knights. The Adeptus Mechanicus now enters something of a wilderness of models, with just a little occasional oases of releases. I guess this reflected the nature of the Adeptus Mechanicus on the battlefield. They didn't have a faction, and they were only ever there as occasional supporting troops or characters within other faction armies. But there were some releases, and one of the most notable, I think, was the Skulls Adeptus Mechanicus miniature set. It was like a customer reward scheme and that ran for a number of years, and I think you had to collect 100 Skulls, which was a lot. It was the most valuable or the highest Skull count reward. And you get a set of, I think it was eight Adeptus Mechanicus Tech Priests and the Servitors. And this is an example of one of them. And this was a very nice miniature. And it was, I suppose this and the others were all in a similar ilk. And they were an evolution of designs we'd earlier seen in the Adeptus Mechanicus. And this, it, you know, it blends elements of this guy with some of the more recent artwork. You know, and it's interesting to look at. But we still have a classic robe that is common to... Adeptus Mechanicus Tech Adepts. He's armed with the signature power axe. He's got this nice cog toothing on one of the cutting edges. He's carrying a hand flamer as well. So emphasizing him as a supporting character. He's got all sorts of equipment and perhaps he's a mechadendrites as well. His face is partially possibly fleshy and partially mechanical as well. And it looks like his breathing is now regulated through this breathing apparatus. On his back, he has this large servo arm with quite formidable looking jaws, some power packs and antenna, and you know, and a few of the nice details as well. Here we see the cogtooth design symbol, which was to become a signature part of the Mechanicus. It's a cog with a human skull inside of it. And sometimes the skull is shown to be half human skull and half machine. That's a common depiction of this. And, and that alludes to the nature of the Adeptus Mechanicus as being a melding of the human and the machine. Interesting historical note here. I'm interested as to where the artist got the design for this cog from. This may be a coincidence, but I once saw a picture that was taken at a, a Nazi party rally in the 1930s. One of the many icons on show was a large cog, just like that, and within it, I think it was in bronze or gold or something, or copper coloured, I think, actually. Within it, there was a Nazi swastika, and I saw it. It really caught my eye when I saw it, and I, I thought, is that where Games Workshop artists got the design for the Mechanicum badge? Is that what inspired them? I don't know. It's a fascinating photo if you can find it, uh, bearing in mind the Mechanicus, and it is actually in colour as well, so it's quite vivid and striking. Another little nice feature on the server backpack is this little manipulator arm here as well which is, you know, a cool little neat feature. And just take us back a bit to the John Blanche artwork, Pontifex Maximus. The Skull's Adeptus Mechanicus were a rare chance to buy a Mechanicus miniature in the history of Games Workshop. Well, I mean, I say buy, well, you couldn't directly buy them. You had to collect Skulls through a reward scheme. So it's actually a rather arduous and difficult route to get hold of them. That reflected the fact that they had no faction, and Games Workshop generally makes miniatures to game with that have factions. Yes, a nice model. Another one of the little oases on the way was this miniature here. And this is one of two, actually, that Games Workshop produced. And these are called Engine Sears, and they were very much targeted to go alongside the Imperial Guard forces. This is a really fascinating and interesting miniature, and it nicely represents the evolution of the Tech Priest concept. This is a friend's miniature that's kind of on long-term loan to me, and he painted it. Yeah, did a really good job of it, I think. So what do we see here? So, well, he's got some signature Mechanicum cues. He's got his power axe. He's armed with a pistol, so he's a supporting character. He's not a mainline combatant. The power axe has got a utilitarian-style look with this clamp on the back of it. 
and it's got a nice stylistic design here with the half skull and the cogtooth design. Gone are the traditional powered armour leg sections and he now has what appears to be a set of cybernetic legs and his arms are in a similar style as well. He has some of his human face remaining but he has a bionic eye and he has this breathing apparatus as well grafted onto him. This little chest buckle or join is actually reminiscent of the old Bob Ollie figure as well. I do like that. He's got a light on his shoulder. Now this is similar to uh, later Space Marine apothecaries. And he's carrying all sorts of widgets and gizmos. He has a very utilitarian servo arm. Uh, so it's quite a crude design, which is a common feature of Mechanicum technology. It's got a drill, it's got a grabber arm. So it looks like it's uh, quite multifunctional as well. And on his power pack, on his servo harness on the back. He has a Mechanicum cog tooth and skull icon. It was a nice model that, but again, it was just in effect like it was a one-off as metal miniature. Later on, Games Workshop did do a re-imaging of this as a plastic miniature, which is still available today. And that's a nice figure as well. You know, it's very faithful to this particular imagining of a tech priest. The next step on this journey, we move away from Games Workshop and take a look at Forge World, who are arguably responsible for the modern day resurgence of the Adeptus Mechanicus and in 30k the Mechanicum. Just like with Games Workshop, Forge World did not pay a great deal of attention to the Adeptus Mechanicus, but they did produce one figure that was quite notable, and that is this guy here, and this is the Titan Tech Priest. I believe this was released around the time that the Reaver Battle Titan was produced by Forge Wall. And very much this figure was actually designed in such a way that you could actually stand it within the internal detail of the body of the Titan. It was done in such a way, I think, as to imagine that the Tech Priest was tending to the Titan systems. This, I think, is a beautiful model. One of the best imaginings of a Adeptus Mechanicus Tech Priest ever. We've got lots of common cues that we've seen before. He's got his long flowing robes. He has a, what appears to be the remains of a human face with a augmented eye. He has a breathing system, like we saw on the engines here. And he's carrying all sorts of accompaniments of his craft. He's got his little pistol. He's got his power axe, so he's armed in the traditional Mechanicus way. He's got all the control device. He has a little amulet, rather arcanely, but quite appropriately. A book, a purity seal, perhaps a sensor bearer of the Omnisire for wafting some nice machine friendly fragrances around. The power axe, I mean, that's, a, that's really cool. There's some nice features to this power axe. Again, we've got this kind of cog tooth skull made into the backhand of cutting edge, got a blade, and then quite neatly at the top, instead of a spike, it has what looks like an enormous screwdriver head, flat-headed screwdriver. That's quite funny, that is. I do like that. What really kind of makes this guy stand out for me, though, is the servo arms, or as they really became known later on, a machinator array. And these are really neat imagining of the servo harness the Tech Priest has. And the backpack itself then has these, what appear to be data cables linking into the rear of the Tech Priest's hood, and presumably attached into his brain. I like that because it's intimating how he has a direct mind control over these manipulators and devices. If we look at the machinator array, one of the arms has got this manipulator claw on it. And then the other is something of a multifunctional tool. And there's a whole variety of gizmos attached to this. I mean, there's what looks like a hand flamer, some sort of probe, maybe a laser cutter. And really, very neatly, this tiny little manipulator claw here. Brilliant design, very, very fine. This is a delicate miniature, but I think it's one of the best imaginings of a Tech Priest ever. It's a really great miniature. I do like it. Although this was originally designed as a bit of an aesthetic model to go alongside the Reaver Titan, this model took on a special significance in 2013 and 12, when Horus Heresy Book 1 Betrayal was being written. And this miniature served as the basis for the loyalist character, Archmagos Caleb Decima of the Ordo Reductor. And if you've got Book 1, there's a great artistic, a full colour artistic rendition of this guy. And it's clearly been taken from this miniature here. And it's a very cool representation, I think. 
I think that was probably a pragmatic decision on Forgeall's part. You know, why not use this wonderful miniature that we've sculpted and sold for a long time? Let's repurpose him as a character for our new Horus Heresy book to uh, give us a little bit more miniature range at the start. And this Titan Tech Priest is kind of like the step in, shall we say, to what has really led to the modern day renaissance of the Mechanicus, which is a 30k representation of the Mechanicum for the Horus Heresy game. And the first miniature that Forge World released, specifically sculpted for the Horus Heresy, was this incredible piece. And this is a Magos Dominus of Legio Cybernetica. And what an amazing miniature this is. If we cast our mind back to those drawings by Will Rees and John Blanche in the Rogue Trader book. This really taps into that almost macabre and almost Gigeresque look that those artists captured. I mean, what an amazing model. This kind of embodies more than any of the model for me. And perhaps with the possible exception of recent Belisarius call, the idea of an adept of the Mechanicum completely replacing their body and ceasing to look human at all. And indeed, this is a case with this. I don't know if he's a slug, a snail, or something else, but he certainly doesn't look human anymore. Well, with the exception of possibly his face, his arms gone, they've been replaced by this large weapon mount, it's a radiation cleanser, this enormous servo arm. Just has these little manipulators now. And he's been integrated into this colossal abeyant and here we have the reactor on the back and here we have the cog tooth design recrafted in the guise of the mechanicum yeah so absolutely wonderful figure and really takes the cybernetically enhancing to a new level all sorts of gizmos gadgets uh, he's even got a cyber familiar here grafted into a volkite serpenta brilliant I think this model really represented Forge World saying, let's make some Mechanicum models that really explore the concept of the law, with these guys turning themselves into machines and beyond human, and really capturing the what is actually quite alien nature of the Mechanicum and the Mechanicus that came after them. You know, they are humans, but they're unrecognizably human at times. And this miniature captures that perfectly. Yeah, what an amazing model. Forge World also let their minds run riot on the Mechanicus front with the creation of the Myrmidons, and this is a Myrmidon Secutor. The Myrmidons are warrior sects of the Mechanicum, and instead of devoting themselves to the art of pursuit of knowledge or production of vehicles or technology, they modified and dedicated their bodies to the machine art of war, and they are utterly enormous and formidably armed indeed. And you can see that this Myrmidon absolutely dwarfs a normal human-sized model. And yet even in this amazingly augmented member of the Mechanicum, we can still see some of the classic design cues of the early Rogue Trader era. He's got this cowled, hooded head, long robes covering the whole of his body, yet his body, well, I don't know, is there anything left of his body? I mean, his legs are clearly all replaced. I mean, they're far larger than human legs. He has replacement robotic manipulator arms. He has a pair of weapon mounts grafted on where his shoulders would have once been. You know, and this one's mounting a phase plasma fusel and an equally esoteric graviton gun. But still we've got all the cabling and the piping, and this makes me think of the Will Rees art again. And on the back, quite neatly, he's got this reactor, which is almost looks like it's been tapped on so it doesn't irradiate himself or perhaps allows it to cool down. But yeah, we still have really classic adherence to, you might say, the typical tech priest layout of equipment and weapons with the fact that he's carrying this enormous power axe. This is still a power axe in game. I think it should really be rewritten as a a power halberd or something larger because it is absolutely huge. I mean, look at the size of it compared to that. Don't tell me that this is only equivalent to normal power axe. Amazing, wonderful models. And another example of Forge World just saying, well, let's let our minds run riot with what the Mechanicus could become. 
And as well as the Secutors, who were equipped for assault, medium to close range assault, they also produced what were called the Myrmidon Destructors. And here we have an example of one of those. Another wonderfully crazy imagining of what a Mechanicus could look like. This guy's got these wicked goggles. <laughs> Amazing. And the model also has these great mechadendrites swinging around all over the place. He's armed with a Volkite Culverin and a Power Fist. But a nice, unusual Power Fist design that looks nothing like we were accustomed to. Again, we've got this great reactor with here, Mechanicum icon on it. And Forgeld went on to produce a whole range of Mechanicum models for the Horus Heresy era 30k game. Really, really great models. And I think it is the success of those miniature ranges in the 30k game that led Games Workshop to realise there was a real market for the Mechanicum. And in 2015, create some new 40k armies. And the first that we had, of course, was the Skitari, who represent the expeditionary forces of the Forge Worlds. I mean, the Skitari fulfil a number of roles as well, but the 40k imaging from 2015 was that type of thing, as opposed to, say, the Titan Guard, who Forge World dealt with separately. Shortly after the Skitari came on the scene, we got the Cult Mechanicus. And the Cult Mechanicus is where I'm going to bring us to the end of this story, with one final miniature. And that's this guy. This is the Data Smith from the Castellan robot set. Now, there was a more dedicated tech priest model or magos model, the Arch Magos Dominus. You know, that's kind of like your ultimate evolution and something more akin to this guy, the Magos Dominus. But this is a very interesting model because it kind of encapsulates many of the earlier ideas in a modern representation. And let's just have a look to see what they are. So he has his robe his signature robe, which has been a common feature of the Mechanicus from the word go. He has this little manipulator arm. Again, he's got this sort of support role characteristic armed with a pistol. And instead of the signature power weapon, he's actually got a power fist, which has got the uh, Mechanicus icon on it. What really interests me, though, about this model is the head. And in this head, I see something that goes right back to the Will Rees artwork from Road Trader and imagines it as a miniature. And this head, for me, is a direct port onto a modern miniature of Will Reeser's artwork. And I think it's really neat to see that all these years on. This model also incorporates the servo arm as well, the light that we saw on the engine sir, and it has a whole panoply of mechadendrites, control devices, and data feeds and spikes. And I do really like this model for the way it did bring so much together of earlier ideas around the Mechanicum and the Mechanicus into a single modern miniature. So yeah, really great model. And after all those years of waiting on from that iconic piece of John Blanche artwork, Pontifex Maximus, we finally got the minions to support those high tech priests in the form of the Mechanicum for 30K and the Skitari and Cult Mechanicus for 40k. So yes, what a great time to be in the game. It's really great to see these ideas finally imagined all these years on from some of the original artistic conception of the Adeptus Mechanicus. I really hope you've enjoyed listening to this episode of Retro Hammer. If you like what I do in the Retro Hammer series and you would like to support the production of these episodes, you can do so by joining my Patreon. There's a link in the description and you can support me for as little as a dollar a month. You can donate whatever you like, and any donations are very gratefully received. Patreons get the privilege of voting each month on what the next Retro Hammer episode will be. So if you'd like to have a say in what episodes of Retro Hammer are going to get made next, that's a great benefit of supporting Channel Leaky Cheese. While we're on the subject of my Patreons, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for supporting me. People like Red Panda 7 Laurent Jalou, Diego Flores, Kael, Alexander Korn, Zerius, Patriots, Knotspenny, Robert Allen Fairburn IV, Stuart Watley, Harris Richards, Mikey Royce, John Finucane, and Tom Stromberg. Thank you all very much. And thank you all very much for listening. That was Retrohammer. And goodbye.